how's it going you guys and I have to be honest when I say whoo I had to pray on this video before I turned on the camera and I'm gonna tell you why <laughs> all right First off, this is going to be a video response. I'm going to uh, make a video response to my uh, friend Paul over at Paul's Rule of Thumb. I'm going to leave you his link up above. This is going to be a video reply to him. This is a video that is probably my one of my most requested videos. I kid you not. Um, up above, I will leave a link to canning dollar store beans i did not expect that video to do as well as it did i think it's sitting at almost 300 000 views <laughs> and i think the number one question that i got in that video um was how do you can your beans how do you do the no soak method um will you show us and the reason why I had to really sit and think and pray on this video is because this is not an approved method. And I know many of you, um, look, I was new as a canner. You guys have watched my journey if you've been following me over the last uh, six years or so. Um, I went from knowing nothing to trying to learn how to be more um, self-sustaining um, from learning how to cook from scratch and bake bread and can and last year garden um, dehydrate uh, all the things so I don't like to put out information that is going to lead you astray or make you do something um, that's not tested and approved um, and even though I have shared this before in previous videos um, I'm a lot more mindful now that I kind of know what I'm doing and my voice is a little bit louder. You know, I have um, many more subscribers now and so I'm extremely humbled by that and it's a great responsibility. And so I never want to lead anybody astray. But I have to be honest with you when I say, and sorry, you're going to hear my kids playing downstairs. Um, when I say to you, that just because it's not a tested method doesn't mean that it's not safe. Okay, with that said, I'm going to tell you all that can go out and get the Complete Guide to Home Canning book. You will find How to Can Beans on page 4-5, the approved tested method. And with that said, I'm also going to say don't follow me. Do your own research, decide for yourself what to do, understand the basics of canning before you try a rebel canning method. There are a few things that I rebel can. I wanna say 98% of what I can is by approved method. There are a few things that I can that are not tested approved methods. Zucchini being one of them. Do I think it's safe to can zucchini? Absolutely, I do. Um, it is my understanding that they tested zucchini, they lost the paperwork on it, and didn't have the funds to retest it, so they just kept it out of the book. Um, I can celery. I absolutely love uh, home canned celery. It's, it's better to me than dehydrated. Um, I can, and, and, and I can beans using the no soak method. Um, I do not like the results that I get from following the tested method. Um, I think soaking and cooking and soaking and cooking, um, by the time you get it to the canner and you can it under pressure for an hour and a half, by the time it comes out of the jar, there's nothing left of it. Now, if you're putting that in a chili, if you're putting that in a minestrone soup, um, you're going to have mush. I just don't like the results. Uh, so I don't do it that way. Every canning queen and king that I know uses the no soak method. Whether they make videos on it or not, um, everyone I know, <laughs> except maybe one person, uses the no soak method. I have been doing beans this way for, since I've been canning, which is since 2014. And I love the results. So, another question I get, 
why do I can dried beans? Uh, there is this misconception that in a, the dried state, beans can last forever. And that's not true. Anybody who's had an old bag of beans that they have soaked and cooked and cooked and cooked and cooked and the bean is still hard knows this for a fact. Beans do have an expiration date even in their dried form. Can you store them dried? Absolutely. I have beans stored in a five gallon bucket uh, that's been sealed forever and a day. Um, but I also like to serve beans instantly. I like to go in my pantry and grab a jar of beans, pop the lid, drain it, throw it in a pot like I did last night, and in, and in 10 minutes I have ranch beans, refried beans, uh, barbecue baked beans, um, you know, the list goes on and on. I don't always want to sit there and have to soak my beans overnight. Uh, I don't want to add more to my to my to-do list than I already have. I have a long to-do list. As it is, I'm a very busy woman. So anything that I can do to make my life a little easier, I like to do. And having beans on my shelf is one of my favorite things that I have on my shelf. I use them almost every day in some different form, capacity, you name it. Healthy for you, great protein without having to eat meat. Um, so many ways you can use this, love it. Um, so that's why I can beans. <laughs> I like them instant and ready to go. It's many of you buy beans in a can. I don't like them in a can, in a metal can. I think they have a weird taste. They have a metal taste to them. They're expensive. And the whole point of learning how to home can is so that I don't have to do that. I can can my own and um, make fast food my way, healthy, easy, um, without having to, you know, go out and buy it done for me or without having to go and run through McDonald's. Um, I like the ease of it and it's a game changer for me in cooking at night. Cooking from scratch takes time. So anytime I can cut some time off of my... Um, you know, to-do list, uh, I do. So, I think those were the big questions that I had about canning beans. Um, just know that I'm sharing this because so many of you asked for it. I want you to do your own research. Don't ever follow me. Don't ever follow any YouTuber. Don't follow any blogger. Don't blindly fo follow anybody. Always do your own research. Make up your own mind of what's best for you, what's best for your family. Um, know the basics of canning and just know that I share this with a very humble heart and, um, and I don't want to lead anybody astray, but I also want to share with you how I do it. This is a top question that I get and, um, I want to share it with you. So with all that said, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to get out my canners, get out my canning jars, and, um, I'm going to show you how I can pinto beans using the no soak method. Um, before I do that, I'll take you into my pantry, which is something I don't share anymore, but I will show you where I keep all of my beans and um, how much I have on hand. Okay, so I store my dried beans in five gallon buckets. I have several of them. <laughs> and so what I do is I bring out beans as I use them and then as I empty the five gallon buckets uh, with the beans because I keep pinto and, and black in one and then my red beans and my white beans in another bucket. As I start working um, and making room in the five gallon bucket when I'm out at the store I just buy another bag. So this bag is opened. Um, this is my next bag to do. This is my next bag to can. This one is my open bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and start canning these and then the next time I'm out at the store, I'll pick up two more bags and refill my bucket. So I always have some on hand to do. Um, as you can see, this is where I store my pinto beans. Um, I, ju I just actually um, used two quarts of them last night for dinner, um, but I go through quite a few of them. 
Uh, black beans is next on my list. I need to can some of those up, but these are all my beans. There's Chi Chi beans that I use um, for not only hummus, but I also like them in my salad. Uh, there's my northern beans. I have barbecue maple beans. Um, I actually have a couple different kinds of barbecue beans. One's a maple, one's a barbecue. And so um, this is where I keep them. And as you see, they go all the way back. I do have some pints back there, but they go all the way back and I just keep them rotated. So as I can fresh, the fresh go in the back and then the older ones come up to the front and I just keep pulling from them. So this is where I keep them <laughs> along with um, all of my other home canned goods here. So, um, so I just keep them in a okay, rotation. One additional thing I want to make mention before we get started, oligosaccharides. I think that's how you pronounce it, phytic acid. These are also questions that I get about the beans being gassy or upsetting your gut when you eat them um, because I'm not soaking them. If you have gastrointestinal issues, you know, follow the recommended tested method. Um, I have never had a problem and I have a very sensitive stomach. Doesn't mean that you won't have a problem, but I have never had a problem uh, with uh, beans canned in the no soap method. I think by the time you pressure can them for an hour and a half and then um, when you take them out to use them, you, you're draining them, you're cooking them again. I have not had an, uh, an issue. No one in my family has an issue. Uh, other friends, canning friends of mine who also do the no soak method have never had issues with this. So, um, you know, like I said, do your own thing. Do what's best for you and your family. Do your own research. This is just how I do it. And um, yeah, so I wanted to make mention of that before we get, wait, see there's one of my bloopers before we get started. All right, so let me spin you around and show you what I got going. Okay, first and foremost, you always want to pick through your beans. Um, I do mine in my sink, so a lot of mine go down the drain, um, but I collected the few that I could, but this is what I pick out. Anything broken, anything wrinkly, um, any skins, any rocks that you find, um, anything of that nature you want to pick out. You want the most pristine product that you can get on your pantry shelf. That way it stays shelf stable for a long time. It's pretty in the jars. It's just, it's, it's inviting to eat, right? So then after you get everything picked off, um, picked out, you wanna go ahead and wash your beans really well. Rinse them really, really well with nice, cool, clean water. Um, you wanna make sure that they're really clean. Now I buy pre-washed um, beans, but that doesn't say that I don't want to make sure that they're also washed really, really well. So go through, wash them really well, get them prepped. Another thing you wanna wash really well are your lids. Woo, please don't take them out of the box and use them. <sighs> Wash them in hot soapy water. You don't know where they've been. You know, cardboard products in factories. I, who knows what's in them? Um, give them a wash in nice hot soapy water. Then get them soaking in hot water. All that does is that just softens the seal a little bit. And I find that you get better results um, with your um, lids sealing than not soaking them. That's my experience. Even with pressure canning, that's my experience. So that's what I do. I've also learned how to can from the old schoolers, um, the original canning queens. And so um, I do as I've been taught and it's worked for me. And so even if uh, guidelines change, I'm still gonna continue on with what works for me. We also have our rings ready to go. Those have already been cleaned, washed, and, um, and ready. My jars clean, washed, ready to go. Have a funnel, have my uh, lid lifter here, my jar lifter here. I have some uh, vinegar, just straight vinegar here, along with some napkins. My two canners that I'm using, the All-American 921 and the All-American 915. These are my two canners. This is a fantastic canning setup. If you want to do a lot of canning um, for the past 
almost six years I've only been using one canner but I'm telling you the second canner has been a game changer for me um, I have loved being able to do double batches um, so that's what I'm going to run today is a, um, a double canning session here and get twice as much on my shelf so the goal is 14 jars of pinto beans no soak method here we go let's get our jars filled before we start filling our jars I'm just going to explain to you why I can the way that I do okay so I it's typically one cup of dried beans per quart half cup per pint I'm doing all quarts today I do slightly under one cup and this is why do you see the thick bean <laughs> this is a half a cup of beans I don't like them thick like this now there are some canners that love them this thick this is not my favorite I like my beans to be loosened liquid I like them like this this is slightly under one cup and so this is the this is the end result that I'm looking for in my jars so we are going to be doing just slightly under one cup um, to can and um, but you do what you like best to do how you like it so I like it a little liquidy so I'm going to do just a little under one cup and then we're going to go ahead and get that right into our jar. Now however you want to do this, it's up to you. I like to do one jar at a time. So there's one jar there. We're going to fill it to one inch head space. We are then going to debubble. And at this time, we're gonna see any kind of bad beans come up to the top of the jar. And if they float, they are bad beans. Now, some people can bad beans. That's up to you. I don't like to can bad food, okay? So, I don't can anything broken. I don't can shells. I don't can, can rocks. I don't can anything that can change the density, which, you know, broken beans, they're just going to mash up and mush up. Um, skins, gross. Uh, rocks, of course, nobody wants to break their tooth. Floating beans, bad beans, I get them out of my jar. I can for my family, and I want them to have the best and safest product that I can give to them, okay? So this is how I do it. Now, I'm going to make sure that it's still at one inch headspace, which it is. Then I'm going to go ahead and clean off the rim. Grab a lid. Grab a ring. Fingertip tight. I am using cool water because I have a cool canner. I have room temperature jars. So room temperature room temperature room temperature if i had hot jars i would want hot product with a hot canner um so that's the way you're going to do it i don't add salt to mine there's no need to add a, extra salt um i will do that when i go ahead and open these up and put them in a recipe i don't add any kind of flavorings because i don't know how i'm going to use these beans i want them to be available to me in any recipe i want to put them in so no salt no flavoring, nothing of the sort, just beans. Great protein, great source of fiber, very healthy for your colon and your bowels. Fantastic to have on your shelf to feed your family with. Um, we incorporate beans several times a week in all of our dinner meals. If it's not in the meal, it's a, as served as a side dish. We love them here. So in the canner that one goes, and we're gonna go ahead and work on our second jar here. Again, just under a cup, just under a cup, so I'll just show you. So it's not a heaping cup, and I just, I get it to a level cup, and then I just, with my thumb, just kind of take some out, and that's how, that's how I do it, okay? I will leave links 
to all of my canning supplies down below uh, for those of you who are going to ask me about my funnel and my pokey joe and my kettle and my canners i will leave all of that down below for you guys okay so here we go i'm going to go ahead and stir that debubble it then i'm going to wait and the bad beans will float to the top get rid of that all right vinegar clean the rim hot clean lid ring fingertip tight in the canner the rest of this I'm gonna probably high speed it so <laughs> this video isn't an hour-long canning video for you guys um, but I will set it to some music and I will film it because I know many of you just enjoy watching the process of canning so I don't want to rob any of you I hope this video is helpful to you guys all right so let's rock and roll American, you fill up uh, your canner two to three inches of water because this is going to go for the longest amount of processing, which is an hour and a half. I go ahead and err on the safe side and uh, add uh, three inches of water, um, and that is before you add your jars. So, of course, when you're adding a uh, volume product to your canner, that um, water line is naturally going to rise. So you're gonna see it a little bit more right here, but trust me, it'll work fine. It'll do great. 
and usually at the end of the um, hour and a half processing time um, I usually end up with about an inch of water left sometimes a smidgen less but usually an inch I just err on the side of caution and go to the three inch mark um, of course if you have a different canner your instructions are going to be completely different than mine um, I'm using again all American canners 921 915 and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these lids on and locked down and turn these uh, babies on and uh, get to process all right guys there we have it lids are closed and locked down I now have them on the flame so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and start bringing these canners up to um, pressure uh, slowly uh, they will start venting when that happens I'll bring you back I'll show you what that looks like All right. steady stream we're venting we're gonna set the timer to 10 minutes and uh, we'll be back been venting for 10 minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and put on the weight there we go weight is on 10 pounds of pressure and now we just sit and wait. It'll be a few minutes, probably five, six minutes, before they come up to at least 10 pounds, 240 degrees. Like I said, my canners like to sit around 11 pounds. So we'll wait for the pressure to rise now. And then we can begin our canning session. Okay. Now it's jiggling, so now I'm gonna turn my canners down. To their sweet spot and I want one to three jiggles per minute nothing more than that nothing less I want my pressure to stay at 240 degrees or slightly above and now I'm gonna set my timer for an hour and a half and um, I'll see you guys back here uh, when that hour and a half is hey guys so it's all done I took the weights off now I'm gonna crack open my canners and take a peek see inside I'm gonna crack this one now sometimes when it's super cold and it's kind of cold so we'll see how this goes sometimes what I do is I'll just crack open the lids um, and let these jars come down off that heat um, just a little bit. So, lift and just crack it just a little bit. And then I'll listen for the jars and see how they do. Sometimes you can hear them, but they seem pretty quiet. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same to this one. See how it goes, and then um, we'll pull these out nice and slow. So, go ahead and take these lids off. And then, pull them right out of the canner. In fact, let me, beautiful, let me turn on slide over here hopefully that will help it's starting to get dark here in Michigan perfect beautiful jars it's great canning session. Okay. All right. Let's crack open the second canner. Get these chars out. Mm 
I'll show you my water. I'm gonna get my canner empty here. some white <laughs> a little bit of white I got hard water I put some vinegar in the jars but obviously not enough but that's okay that'll wash off I'll wipe right off like so so when I go to wash my jars up I always wash them in hot soapy water with vinegar and they will get crystal clear and beautiful so, all right, now, here you go, 14 beautiful quartz pinto beans put back on my shelf, headspace looks beautiful, those beans will eventually settle when they cool down, absolutely beautiful. And then inside my canner, you can see how low the um, water uh, mark is, let me see, got my Pokey Joe here. And we started at the black line. So, and we've got about a little over an inch of water in that one. And in this one, a little less, oh, I'm fogging you up. Let me see, yeah. About the same little less about an inch of water left in there um, there might be a slight coloring but I've got orange lighting under my um, cabinets or under my uh, microwave so it's always hard to tell um, but let's turn on the big kitchen light and oh, helps to turn on the light there we go. It's a better look at the water. It looks pretty clear. Pretty clear. So, yeah. Very, very happy with this canning session. And, um, yeah. Nice and smooth. Warmed up the house. Got lots of moisture in the air. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, my rebel canning session that I wasn't too sure I was going to film and post for you guys. But you know, this is the way I can them. And um, like I said, do your own research. Don't follow me. Um, do the approved method if you feel safer and more comfortable doing that. Um, this is how I do it. It's one of the only few uh, things that I rebel can. Um, it's definitely one that um, I have done my research on and feel comfortable doing. So you've got to make your own decision for your family. So with that, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will try my very best to answer them for you. Um, also check down in the comment section because a lot of times uh, you might have the same question as somebody else. Uh, so it might be a question I've already answered. And so, um, you know, double check. Sometimes you can find, you know, my comment section is full of fantastic people with good information. So um, everybody always lends a hand down there and um, they help each other out. And so uh, many times the answer to your question is already there. All right, guys, I'll be seeing you soon for another canning video. All right. Bye, guys.